Hey guys, my name is Jessica and I am a furniture flipper. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I have flipped a lot of furniture this year. You may wonder sometimes how much I actually make doing this and is it worth my time? That is what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. So if you wanna know how much money I made in the year 2020 flipping furniture, be sure to keep watching. So I'm sitting here editing this video and I realized I said the year 2020 and it is definitely not 2020, so I need to get with it. <laughs> so let's get into it. I am going to be going over each piece that I sold this year and how much I spent to buy and redo it and also how much I sold it for. And I'm giving a little bit of backstory on the pricing of the item. Now, I know I get a lot of comments from you guys saying that I do not charge enough for my pieces and I know that. And there's some reasons on why I don't charge a whole lot. Number one reason is because of my area. Most everybody that has bought my pieces throughout this year are coming an hour away from me from a larger city. I live out in the country. It's not very populated around here. So that limits on how many people are willing to drive out this far and also how many people are actually seeing my listings because it's out, maybe outside their search range when they're searching for furniture on Facebook Marketplace. I sell most all of my furniture on Facebook Marketplace. I have only sold a couple pieces through an app called OfferUp and I have mostly quit posting anything on there because I've not had much success with that. So I sell almost 100% of my furniture on Facebook Marketplace. Second reason why I don't charge very much is I do not have the space to keep this stuff. I am storing my finished furniture in my house, in an extra bedroom that I have, and I do not have the space to keep a lot of stuff because when I bring new furniture in to work on it, I need somewhere to work on it. You know, I have stored furniture in my living room, I've stored some in my son's room, even in my own bedroom. So because I don't have the space to store it, I price it accordingly so that it will move faster um, just so I can get it out of my house and move on to the next project. And number three is I am not doing this for a living. This is a hobby. This is something that I do during my child's nap time. This is something I do in my spare free time, which I have very little time. Now let's get into the furniture that I've sold this year and how much I sold it for. So I sold this set of dressers for $380 and I spent a total of $67 to buy and redo these pieces. Pretty pleased with that profit that I made off of those. And next, I sold these green chairs for $30. Someone had given these chairs to me and I spent about five dollars redoing them. Um, chairs aren't something that sell super easily so I knew I wasn't gonna be able to sell them for a whole lot and also I hardly had anything in them so I was willing to let them go pretty cheap. So this blue desk I listed it for 125 and someone offered me a hundred dollars and I kind of reluctantly accepted it. I wish I had stayed by my price but I was happy to let it go and the person that bought it really really loved it so that kind of makes it all worth it. So I spent a total of $25 redoing this desk, and if you saw that video, it was quite the transformation because it was a really old, nasty desk that I was able to save from the thrift store because it sat in the thrift store for months. It was $8 at the thrift store, and I just kept going back and looking at it because I was intrigued by the price and that it was solid wood, but it was just so ugly. I just had a hard time seeing potential in it, but I finally broke down and bought it and gave it a new life. Now this dresser, I really love the transformation of it. Uh, definitely modernized it and I was super excited about this piece. I sold this piece for $290. I spent $84 to buy and redo it. So this gray dresser was definitely quite the transformation. It used to be two little low boy end tables and I turned it into a dresser. Um, definitely an extreme makeover. Because that it was kind of pieced together the way it was. We did a good job on putting it together and everything. Because it wasn't originally a dresser, I factored that into my price and I sold it for $200 and I spent a total of $65 to redo it. Next, I redid this little low boy. Um, definitely a transformation and I love how it turned out. I had it listed for a really long time and it just wasn't getting any traction. And I understand why it was a unique uh, piece but not a real practical piece. And also the color was bold. 
So I was aware of that when I painted it yellow. So I had it for a while and I needed to get rid of it. Um, I would have liked to get more for it. I sold it for $80 and I had a total of $28 into it. So not a real good profit there. Oh well, sometimes you don't make much money on some things. So this little end table was a really fun piece to redo. Um, it was just, I absolutely love how it turned out. It was just super fun and I had it listed I think at 80 but someone offered me 50 and I reluctantly accepted it and I had $10 into it. So then this French Providential style buffet, I had for a long time and I didn't have much interest in it and I don't know if it was the style or the color or what, uh, but I had a really hard time selling this one and I had for months and when I finally had someone interested in it, um, I was really happy to finally be able to sell it. And I sold it for $200. And I can't remember how much I had into it. Now this little coffee table I had for a really long time as well. Um, coffee tables aren't something that I've had much success selling very well. Dressers are the main thing that I sell really easily. But this coffee table I had for months. And I didn't have a whole lot of money into it, so I wasn't super worried about selling it for a whole lot. Um, I had $8 into it, and I was able to sell it for $30. Now, the screen dresser, I sold for $130, and I had $30 into it. So, $100 profit, not too bad. Now, this black dresser, I had listed a little bit higher. I think it was at $300, I may have originally listed it. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of interest in it, but I finally did sell it for $225 and I had $53 into it. Now this little end table, someone gave to me and I used paint that I had on hand, I used scrap wood to redo the top on it. So I had about $4 into the piece and I sold it for $40. Now this desk, I had a really hard time selling. I had it for a few months and I just didn't have a whole lot of interest in it. Desks aren't something that I've had much success selling so I try not to buy desks anymore just because they don't move very quickly. So I sold this for $65 and I had $15 into it. Again, not a real good profit margin. I had it listed for hire for a while but I kept dropping the price till I could finally sell it. Now this little end table I found at my local dump. Someone had thrown it away so it was free. I used some paint that I had on hand and so it cost me about four dollars to redo it and I sold it for forty dollars. Now this furniture flip was my biggest money maker this year. It was a couch. I had never flipped a couch before. Um, I was a little nervous um, that I'm gonna be stuck with it because I priced it higher to begin with but I realized later that it was a little bit too high um, but anyways I kept dropping the price until I started getting some interest and so I paid forty dollars for the couch and I was able to sell it for $400. So that was my best flip this year. Now this mid-century modern style dresser was a really fun piece to redo and I love how it turned out. I was able to sell it for $250 and I had about $33 into it. So this piece of furniture, I was really sad to sell at the price that I did. I found this first edition Lane Walnut Veneer mid-century modern style record cabinet at a thrift store for $10 and it needed a ton of work but after restoring it it was absolutely gorgeous and one of a kind piece and I really wanted to get at least $400 for it but I had it for months with little to no interest and I was starting to think about selling it maybe like on Etsy or something. I've never sold any furniture online and shipped it and that just kind of freaked me out. It's something I probably should look into, but I was really nervous on trying to do this for this piece. But anyways, I received an offer from someone for $200 and I was really, really sad, but I accepted it. And um, she, it was actually a funny story. She was visiting her parents in Kentucky, which is like, three hours away from me or something. She drove all the way down here and she lives in Colorado and she was on her way home to Colorado. So she drove all the way from Kentucky here to pick up that piece and then drove it home all the way to Colorado in her van. So that was probably the most interesting story of the furniture flips. But anyways, I was really sad to sell it for that price because I know it was a really semi-valuable vintage piece, so. That was a bummer, but I was at the point I just had to get it out of my house. I couldn't keep it any longer. It just, it sat too long. <laughs> this buffet was probably my favorite makeover ever. I had this piece for a few months before I started working on it. I was just 
trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to do with it. Intimidated by some of the damages that was on it, but I was able to re restore it and refinish it. Love how it turned out. I think it's my favorite furniture flip this year. So I sold it for $325 and I had $45 into it. So I painted this cedar chest and I didn't love how it turned out, but I went ahead and posted it for sale anyways. Um, and I sold it for $135 and I had $22 into it. I was happy I was able to sell it because I was thinking about uh, stripping the paint off and doing something different with it because I just didn't like the finish, but the person that bought it absolutely loved it. So. That's what's most important. So this dresser I had for a few months. Um, I liked the finish on it, but the drawers had some serious issues. It was poorly made. I think I had it listed at like 130 originally, but it wasn't selling. It had issues, so I kept dropping the price, and I ended up selling it for $60, and I don't remember how much I had into it. So it was not a big money maker, but it wasn't a good piece. Quality wise, some, it was homemade and poorly made and the drawers had serious issues that I just couldn't fix. And anyways, I needed to get it out of my house. So I sold it for not very much. <laughs> this dresser was also one of my favorites. Um, came out great. I sold it for $325 and I had $50 into it. So this antique dresser and nightstand set I had for quite a while. It I wasn't getting much interest on it at all and I was thinking about maybe getting some transfers and putting on the drawer fronts. I just felt like it didn't quite look right with the, the wooden drawers. Something just didn't quite look right to me. I wasn't real happy with how it turned out. Um, and I was trying to find a, uh, tr like a floral transfer to put on it, but I was having such a hard time finding anything. I never ended up finding one to put on there, but I ended up selling it for $290. I had a total of $74 into it. And then my last furniture flip of the year was these two dressers. Um, I spent $43 to buy and redo them and I sold them for $325. I had listed them for $375. Somebody offered me $325. I really wanted to get $350 at least, but we have guests coming for Christmas, and so I really wanted them out of my house, so I was willing to take 325 for them just to get them out of my way. So now I'm gonna share the total amount that I made selling all this furniture this year. So all of these pieces I showed you, I sold, and it was a total of $4,170. And then all of my cost for all the pieces came to a total of $799. So that is a profit of 3,371 bucks. Again, this is just something I'm doing in my spare time. I am a stay-at-home mom. I help my husband run a business, and I also have some cleaning jobs on the side. So. This is just something I'm doing in my spare time. I am not gonna make a bunch of money doing this, but I'm able to make you know a couple hundred dollars a month to, you know, to help pay utilities and bills and stuff. So that's what I do it for. Um, it's also just something fun. It's a fun creative outlet for me to express myself artistically. I love being able to restore furniture. I love being able to take damaged, unwanted old furniture that nobody else wants and restore it repair it and give it a new life and a new look so that it's modern and trendy and able to go in people's homes and be able to reuse instead of being thrown away because so much furniture is just thrown away because it's old and undesirable. You know, it can be changed and given a new look and become trendy and really stylish with a little bit of work. So I love being able to do that. Um, that's what I'm passionate about. So this is something that I'm passionate about and I enjoy and I'm not gonna get rich doing it. So that is all I made in a year. Not very much money, but it definitely, you know, it just helps pay bills and stuff like that. Also, another thing that I see about doing this is I'm able to make content for you guys to be able to enjoy um, and hopefully inspire other people as well. And in doing so, with my YouTube channel, I am able to make a little bit of money through my videos. Um, so I'm not able to make a whole lot of money because I have a small channel and it's growing. Um, but this year I've been able to make a total of $1,084.72 on YouTube. That's just money coming in occasionally from ad revenue from these videos. Hopefully that number will go up. Um, YouTube is a lot of work. I spend a lot of hours creating videos and editing them, uploading them, writing out descriptions and all that stuff. And it's a lot of work and time consuming that I'm able to do in my spare time. And hopefully that will grow into something more and I'll be able to make 
more money on YouTube. But for now, it's bringing in, you know, not very much money, but it's something. Something is better than nothing. And in today's economy, any extra money definitely helps. I know people are curious about how much money you know, you make furniture flipping and if it can be profitable. Obviously, again, my area and how much I'm actually able to do. You know, if I were able to do a piece every week um, and make a couple hundred dollars on each piece, that would be a lot better. Um, but I just can't get a whole lot done in, in my spare time. And it does take a lot of time to source for furniture. I mostly buy my furniture at a local thrift store. You know, I could do more like Facebook Marketplace and stuff, but there's not a whole lot of stuff in my area um, that's available through there. So that's just what I do and what works for me. Obviously, other people will have a lot more better success at it if they work harder at it, but this works for me and my family right now, and hopefully it will grow in the future, and I definitely am learning about pricing and what types of furniture sells well, what styles sell well. So I am learning and growing and hopefully this coming year I'll be able to make a little bit more money doing this um, as I learn. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy my channel. I am trying to grow my channel so subscribing and commenting and watching my videos helps me out a lot. Definitely commenting. I love hearing from you guys. It is kind of um, frustrating when you work really hard to make these videos, you put them out and you, and you just don't get any responses and you don't know if people like, did they enjoy that? Did they, like, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are thinking. So I love when you comment on my videos and let me know what you think of them, especially if you have any you know, helpful critiques. It's very much appreciated and it also does help my channel out a lot because I've noticed that videos with more comments tend to get a lot more views because I think the YouTube algorithm um, promotes videos that get more viewer engagement. Anyways, feel free to comment on my videos. <laughs> also something that I started this year was doing the comment section, which I'm not going to do in this video, but I do in other videos. That's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you guys in a later video. Hi! Hi!